good morning everybody nancy pelosi said women are leaders everywhere you look from the ceo who runs a fortune 500 company to a housewife who raises her children and heads her household our build is built our world is built by strong women and we will continue to break down the walls and defy stereotypes distinguished dignitaries esteemed panelists and all our amazing attendees our audience we wish you a very very good morning to say that I'm thrilled to welcome you to the most awaited second season of Women's Power Summit 2021 on this joyous and befitting occasion of the International Women's Day would be an understatement. I am bubbling with energy and anticipation. Uh, so our chief guest has arrived. Uh, Ma'am is here. Mm -hmm. I would like to hand over uh, the, the uh, floor to uh, Dr. S. Mukherjee, Ma'am, so she can give a very short introduction and welcome her. Thank you, Anushka. Our Reverend Chief Guest, Honorable Shrimati Menaka Gandhi, our keynote speakers, Professor Dr. Sunaina Singh, Her Excellence Dr. Janice Darbadi, who is the illustrious woman achievers of the world. And everybody in this uh, platform, we are thankful to the platform provider, Dr. Shashi Sharma, Principal Magad Mahila College, Patna University. Dear netizens, we all welcome Madam Menuka Gandhi to this platform. It's a momentous day for all of us, and I believe it will keep getting momentous even more year after year. Today, we are blessed to have her and uh, honor us also to uh, continue with this platform. We have grown up in awe, watching, reading, listening about Honorable Madam Menaka. We have heard tales and tales about her tenacity, her passionate personality, and her unconditional love for country, for the environment, and for animals. The country owes a lot to the thinking instilled by her unwavering efforts and her hard work. For generations to come, her country vision will be remembered much more than what uh, Rachel Carson made through her book, Silent Spring. We are honored, privileged, and blessed to have our country's most revered minister for environment, best known ambassador for animal rights with us today our, as our chief guest. Today, she will be speaking on Beti Bachao. Welcome to Transform and We, we Forum today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here on this really important day. In actual fact, I completely disapprove of Women's Day. And that is the reason, the reason is that every day should be a Women's Day. There are only two sexes. Do we have a man's day? So why do we ghettoize ourselves by making a Women's Day? It's meant only for minorities, but women are 51% of the population internationally. So how is it that we fit into any of the categories that allow us to be segregated into one day? However, and now that we are here, and I'm going to speak for 10 minutes, let me uh, just talk about the five or six things that have happened that India was ready for and which have completely changed us. Sometimes change comes on really soft feet. We don't realize how much we have changed um, because it's been done so softly. Not everything needs a war or a tamasha or, or uh, you know, pradarshans. Sometimes it is done so happily because India is ready for it. And one of the things that India was ready for was Beti Bachao that we took up in 2014. As soon as I became minister, this became the first priority of the government. Now, what was this? This was the one thing that was holding up every single freedom of women. And that was, it started with the freedom to be born. When I became minister, there had been centuries of girl killing, whether in the womb or being strangled outside the womb, as soon as the... As soon as the baby was found to be a girl. This was taken up by the Prime Minister, by my ministry, by me, 
in a really happy way. And when we took it up, the population in many districts in India had come down to 735 women uh, as against 1,000 men, whether in Gujarat, whether in Jammu and Kashmir, whether in parts of Bihar. The odd thing about uh, the killing of, of girls was that India was divided vertically. There was a line running through the middle in the West, which is the more affluent part of India, there was much more killing of girls. So it had nothing whatsoever to do with education. And in the East, um, there was much less killing of girls because uh, children were children. Everybody was poor. So whether it was a poor girl or a poor boy, it didn't matter to the parents. But in the West, specifically in education areas, they were very specific that they wanted only two children, but those two children should be in the order of first boy, then girl, or maybe girl and then boy, but certainly not two girls. They could have two boys, but not two girls. So the second girl was always done away with. Now in this, in the face of this, delinking it from education, going into new paradigms completely, we started Beti, Beti Bacha. And we had a wonderful woman handling it called Preeti, who was the secretary in my ministry. And we made very easy jobs. We took very little money. The whole thing was, I think, one crore per district. We took 100 districts. And we started giving awards to people who uh, would make, say, instead of uh, their shop being called Gupta and Sons, would be called Gupta and Daughters. We started having informers in every village. We tighten up the entire checking systems of, uh, of when people go to have their, uh, you know, go for checking to gynecologists. And we checked out that, I mean, we tighten up the whole system and so that they, we could know immediately if they had checked what the sex of the child was. We had uh, a lot of uh, happy, happy things happening once the girl was born from the village itself. We had, we gave, a, we gave tax exemptions to anybody who would put their child, put their house or their property in the name of the daughter or their wife. So, you know, there were about a hundred odd uh, different things worked out. And I, quite frankly, expected that within five years, we would go from, say, 735, because we had taken the worst 100 in India. We would go from 735 to maximum, we would go to 800, if, it, if, if the program was a success. But India was ready for this. Suddenly, at the back of each truck, there was Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao. There, it was on the billboards, people put it on their names, the Rotary Clubs took it up, the NGOs were happy, all our women activists came forward, all the doctors, what's it called, PCP and DT people, caught the PCP and DT people, they were, everything fell into place. And within one year, India changed. I can't believe it. We went up to, in one year, not five years, in one year, we were 950 which means there had been virtually no killing during that year. In a normal time, the um, statistics for women to be born, for girls to be born, is always 11 is to 10. There will be more girls born than boys. So it, we allowed nature to do what she does. And the extraordinary thing happened that India changed. Now, when you look back, it seems to be inconceivable that there was a time when girls were killed because India has changed. We may have had very rough times in the last one year. With the economy may have gone down. We may have had a lot of things wrong, but this has continued to go up. We've gone from 950 to 955 to 956, and the time will come when we'll be at par as nature intended. So this has been a massive change created by the whole of India in a happy way. So there are certain things that when India is ready, then we can, uh, we have to catch the tide. And that's what we did with Beti Bachao.
But what we did apart from that was three or four other things. One was every district now, almost every district has a one-stop center, which we uh, created. And that one-stop center is for women who have been beaten by their husbands, domestic violence, or there's been a problem in the village, or they have, you know, there's been something in which they need a doctor, they need a lawyer, they need somebody to do their cases, and they need a place of refuge. I, we started these, they're called Sakhi centers. And, you know, every time I open one, I keep saying, I hope it stays empty. But for instance, the first one we opened in Raipur had 200 women coming almost daily for help because it has, we give you free service, free nurse, free doctor, free lawyer, looking after them. It's also got eight beds so that uh, people can um, come there for Sharan if they so need it. Now, these one-stop centers were built in these five years um, in almost every constituency. And they, they are providing actual work. They also provide mm, psychological uh, investigation, training, whatever. Whatever the woman needs is provided by these centers. In fact, I would suggest that all of you go and look at the centers in your own area and see whether they're working or not. I've inspected some. And some are doing extremely well, some maybe not so well. But the third thing we started during my time was we made, made it compulsory for all offices to have anti-harassment um, committees. Now, um, every company has to put it on their audit. That's the amazing thing. Every company has to put it on their yearly audit and whether they have, had, they have started a harassment committee or not and they have to have women heading that committee. If it has more than five, uh, 10 people are employed in the company, this is what they have to have. So this, in some companies, it works better than others, but it certainly is working. In fact, it's because we started this anti-harassment movement in, co in companies and offices, which led to the Me Too movement. And the Me Too movement has scared everybody hugely, especially with the recent judgment, I hope that it will have a huge impact on the kind of sexual harassment that comes verbally and the physically in offices where they think they can get away with. The fourth thing that, you know, we did lots and lots of things, but I can only remember these just now because I haven't structured the speech, was to make maternity leave for 26 weeks. This is an important, in fact, it's the second longest period in the whole world. And it is important for women to bond with their children. So this is also one of the things we did to give you more power. And the last, I mean, one of the other things we did was to make sure that you no longer on your passport, school certificates or anything, school entrance, have to sign your father's name, your husband's name. You just sign the mother's name and that's good enough. So that also was passed. And that was also part of giving the woman enough confidence and power. And I'm happy that we could do that. I mean, there was lots of other things we did, including the Boxo Act and other things. But these are specific to giving women more, you know, for instance, the first thing I did when I became minister was, because it had bothered me for a long time, is that if a woman's husband dies, in order even to get the death certificate in the villages, she had to run around to 20 people, SDMs and other people. Now she gets it as, as the body is there. Um, because she would have to pay for it and it would hold up all her varasat. So that also was changed. In fact, that was the first thing I did. Um, I'm sure that in your own areas, you've done extremely well. And we are all very proud that you are now uh, today coming together to um, as a power force. Thank you. Thank you so much, our honorable chief guest for giving this morning such an intriguing, inspiring start. Young men, young minds, we believe that they are like sponges. They are always searching for the right information, input to soak in. 
we could not think of a better luminary than more suitable for our own platform. Thank you will be a small word to enlighten us. Having accepted our invitation, we are we feel obliged, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, and I wish you all well.